Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we'll be painting the classic redhead lure pattern and we're gonna make it a little bit more modern. We're gonna give it our own touch and we're gonna make the pattern maybe a little bit more up to date with uh, today's standards and expectations of a lure pattern. So actually we're gonna make it a little bit more realistic. Also in this video I'm gonna show you how you can paint more realistic white scales and we're starting right now. Right, so first we're gonna do a base coat. I like to use Wicked White for this because that adheres very well. I also mix in a little bit of 4011 and 4050 for better adhesion and that's gonna give a really good base coat that really sticks to the lure. Now the body of a redhead is typically white and we're not gonna do it any different. We're also gonna do it white. But we're gonna give it real wide scales. It looks like it's gonna look really fishy. And in order to do that, we need a contrast that's in between the scales. So I'm not gonna airbrush any black on there, which is used mostly in classic patterns when you do scaling. But I'm gonna do a black wash and I'm gonna make it very uneven. It's gonna be gray, it's gonna be a little bit darker here and there, but it's gonna be very uneven. And that is gonna create that subtle gray dark tone between the scales and it's gonna look more realistic but still it's gonna give a lot of depth and it's gonna look like real white scales. Now the trick is I'm gonna only let this dry for a short period of time and then I'm gonna dip it off with my paper towel to take the excess wash off. So that I leave a nice dark grey and some here and there, some black spots, but nothing too dark because I don't want to create too much of a contrast. Alright, now this is dry, we're gonna put on our shower sponge stencil, which is simply a shower sponge and I just cut a little piece off of it. So we're gonna put that on there. So now that our stencil is on there, we're gonna spray our white first because we're, we want white scales. So I'm gonna use Wicked Gloss White and I'm using a gloss white because I want to put some pearls on there. And a gloss white is gonna enhance that shine because that glossy base just reflects a little bit more light which uh, makes the metallic and the pearls pop a little bit more. Now. Now it's super important that we only spray in one direction as from the head towards the back because we want to fill in the back of the scales, not the front. The front needs to be darker. In order to create a realistic scale, the front is always darker and the back is always a little lighter. So that's why we're going to spray only in that direction to fill up the end of every scale and make that white again. Next up, I'm gonna do my first polescent paint on there. We're gonna do it in the same direction because we only want the white to be covered. I'm gonna do some pearlized white and then some metallic white cores as well, both from Createx. Next, when this is all dry, we're gonna use Wicked Gloss Black. And I found out that this black is actually really transparent. It's a really saturated, with a lot of gloss in there so it makes that black really transparent which is perfect for shadowing our scales because now we sprayed three layers of white in one direction and you cannot help it it's gonna cover more than you want to so the the beginning of every scale is more than is more white than it's black or dark so with that transparent black we're gonna darken the beginning of every scale a little bit again and that's gonna give that impression that those scales are a little bit uh, pointing inwards into the body creating a shadow on top of each other and that's gonna create that depth that's gonna give that feel that it's really realistic so now we spray from the opposite direction which is from the back to the front just with a little bit of black try to keep it as subtle as possible filling in every scale in the front And now that that darker tone is dry, we want to highlight our scales a little bit again. And highlight means the lightest point. 
because if you want to have something a little bit more 3D, you want to have some depth in something, you need at least three colors, three different tones to make your brain think that certain colors are further away and other colors are closer by. A highlight is either something that is very shiny or something that is closer by. So in order to create that highlight, and that highlight is gonna make your brain think that the tip of every scale is a little bit upwards and closer to you, we're gonna use Vleo White. And we're gonna thin that down with a little bit of airbrush flow improver and a little bit of producer just to make that a little bit more transparent, a little bit more liquid. And we're just gonna spray the ends of the scale, nothing else, trying to get just those tips of the scale everywhere, very subtle, very lightly on there. Now that the white is dry, we're gonna take off our stencil. And I always love this part. That is a very clean, white but still realistic scale pattern. Right, so now with some regular Vallejo white, we're gonna make the head white again and we're gonna spray the belly white again as well. Now for our head we're gonna build up our colors, we're gonna start with the lightest colors and we're gonna finish it off with the darkest ones later. And it's gonna give a lot of texture and a nice, it's gonna make a real cool head. So first of all I'm gonna use Vallejo Game Air Hot Orange which is a really nice, very bright, strong orange, yellowy tint. It's a little bit reddish as well if you look in the bottle, but then you need to layer it on really thick. Now I'm also going to add some metal medium from Vallejo. Uh, this is something I haven't had for long yet, so I didn't experiment a lot with it yet. But for the things that I used it with, it looks really promising. Any paint from Vallejo, any color, you can make a kind of a metallic or pearl pearlescent paint. So by, buying, so by using only metal medium, you suddenly got a whole range of different colors of pearlescent paints. You can also use it straight from the bottle and it's a white pearlescent. But when you mix it with a Vallejo color, you, you create, you're creating a different pearlescent color actually. So you do not need to buy every pearlescent color anymore. You can, you can just buy metal medium. And it also works with the Createx paints, only transparent ones, not with the opaque ones. But you can mix this with the transparent paints too. And then you're just creating this really nice pearl. For instance, some pearls, you, it's not easy to find. Like a moss green pearl, it's not easy to find. But you can mix some metal medium with moss green. And then you get this really nice dark greenish pearlescent paint. Which is super useful for trout patterns and roaches and uh, big mouth bass as well. So it's a super interesting product to work with. Give it a shot. Experiment a little bit with it. I am experimenting myself with it. So when I know more I will show this more often in my videos and show what I find out that you can do with it. But for now it's very simple. You can mix it with any transparent color and you're gonna create a more pearlescent paint. It's gonna brighten that color so make sure that um, you know that because it's a white fluid you're adding to your paint. So that is logically gonna brighten up your paint a little bit. But uh, with a really dark transparent paint you can build it up and build it up and it, you can get it really dark still. So um, it's not going to influence those dark colors too much. But yeah, it's a really interesting product. I'm going to use it with hot orange. So I create this pearlescent hot orange color which is really nice. And as you can see it's quite thick, so I always thin it down just a little. One drop should be enough. 
and then some flow improver Now with some Vallejo masking fluid, I'm gonna splatter it on there with a flat paintbrush. This is my new favorite thing to do to create texture. I really love the effect. Now with some Vallejo bloody red mixed with some metal medium, I'm gonna do the first red color layer. Now to create some more texture and depth in everything, I am gonna dip a little bit of Wicked Opaque Pyro Red and Wicked Opaque Pyro Orange on there. I'm gonna use my favorite paper towel for that. Probably thin them down just a little, maybe not even that. I think I'm gonna leave them at the, as they are. Because I want them to be very opaque so they leave nice little irregular spots and textures here and there. And now our orange and red is dry, we're gonna peel off our masking tape again. I'm just gonna use my finger. And now as a finishing touch I'm gonna apply a little bit of a whitewash between the gill plates and behind the gill plates. And now that our whitewash is dry we're gonna take a little piece of wet cloth and we're gonna wipe down the excess. Now I'm gonna put these glass eyes in from Lure Blanks and then our lure will be finished. Ready for a clear coat. I changed my mind a little bit and I'm also going to paint a little fin on both sides using a stencil from Lure Blanks and some Wicked Detail Raw Umber which is this nice orangey red brownish tone that's going to fit really well with the red head and the white body. And I'm quickly going to do this in a really bad angle. I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I used to paint this lure and this will guide you to my webshop which is based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there you will be supporting me and the channel. If you got any questions, suggestions or you want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye!